Oh, it's this guy again. Wow, it's a daily ritual, huh? <laughs> he has only left to teach him today. Uh, I shouldn't get her cupcake or something. It's okay, it'll be easily solved with cupcakes. What minor insequential offense did Stark commit this time? It's such a great gag that just weirdo dude showing up for Stark every day. As I said in the comment, it reminds me a little bit of Kung Fu Hustle with the homeless guy selling this seemingly scammy book of secret techniques. Maybe he's an actual master, you never know. Maybe it's real. The path of the warrior is never over. Reflect on that, Stark. It also could be a negative thing, something that really gets to me that also reveals a deficiency of mine, which is people using unsolicited advice as a way of self-gratification. It's not for you. It's so that they can reinforce this image of themselves as being great and wise. Wait a minute. This is a random thought I just had. Are there warrior exams too? Do you need a license to be a warrior? Do you need a license for everything? Do you need a license to be a priest? Probably do. That's probably governed by the church. Why are the mages so messed up? What does that mean for magic? Episode 27, an era of humans. Interesting. That was the whole flam and Siri thing. Oh, this is interesting. She's opening up to Stark. Finally, Stark isn't the one who made her angry. Is that her original staff? The one from the beginning? Okay, yeah. Both can be true? God, so many arguments. I realized way too late. Could have been avoided if I just could have been able to make the distinction between a logical driven conversation and an emotionally driven conversation. Because they can both occur simultaneously or one after the other. But you have to be able to identify which one is which. Freerun can give the practical advice of which staff would work better and understand Fern's pain at losing the staff that her father figure gave her. Both are real. She grew into it. She could barely hold it at first. That is also true, yes. Everyone was coming at it as a teacher, worrying about magic for survival. Oh, she's got an edge on her now, but you won't. They love each other. That's a fight. That's a fight. I, I don't know. Okay, wow, she's really broken, huh? Oh. Yeah, what does the world come to? I'm trying to fix the staff. And as your uncle. <sighs> uncle Duncan. <laughs> Duncan just keeps his girl around with a steady supply of donuts and fatherly love. Why do you hang around this guy? He buys me donuts. I've done more for less. <laughs> oh, really? No idea. I had no idea. Stop being reasonable. Yeah, he was about to kill Khan and Levine. It's because he's wise. Right. right. You can hate the behavior and love the person. Seeing through people's flaws and recognizing it as, as pain or just not having had the opportunity to learn something yet kind of strips the bad behavior of its menace. It just gives the picture a lot more depth. In fact, you might even love people with flaws if you see a similar part of your journey that you went through. Yeah, we also underestimate the effects of time. It's easy to imagine the current situation is forever. I think it was great. He gives me donuts. Steady supply of donuts and fatherly love. <laughs> Can you fix it? This customer service, though. It's all your fault. I'm an emotional mess. <laughs> I like how this guy's just making all his own problems. Oh yeah, he's really good with materials. That's his thing. Since I have no way to measure, it looks pretty easy. 
Problem solved. What was I mad about again? Not true. That's what I thought. I like how Sark just off screen. By himself, is just turning into a man. He's his own guiding star. That old rambling dude is kind of onto something. People don't really have much left to teach Stark. Emotional guidance would be good for Stark, and there are definitely emotional areas he could improve, or he has his blind spots, but he's already gotten far enough in the skill level of self determined growth that it will just run its course. About what he said about how all that matters is someone tries to understand you. This is probably a very bold statement and I'm not 100% sure about this, just my instinct. Whenever you think somebody is failing you or is not doing enough for you, very likely that you are the one who isn't understanding something. You're not understanding what motivates that person. You're not understanding that your priorities for what you want for yourself are not universal. And actually, maybe painfully, the one who has the burden of fixing it is you because you are all you have. You are all you have control over. And you can only really start judging other people's behavior and lack of understanding when you yourself have maximal understanding. At which point, if accomplished, you would no longer be bothered by the misunderstandings other people have of you. This is not to say that people don't do terrible things and even worse, do terrible things deliberately. And it's also not to say that you can't choose to end a relationship. But anything that starts with, if you love me, you would, or you should know that I, you know, probably has gone wrong somewhere. To take this situation, Fern is saying Freebrin doesn't understand her. Like, okay, sure, that could be true simultaneously in some ways, though, in this case, I actually don't think it's true. But what it is more importantly for Fern is it's Fern not understanding Freebrin. Oh, my. Freebrin to know. Basically. Fern doesn't talk to perverts. Why don't you just charge more for the repair then? <laughs> this guy's just the source of all his problems, for real. <laughs> he like makes the problem and then complains about the problem. Here's the understanding. Whoops. May have misjudged a little bit. It's natural. She's great. She does a great job with Fern. Parenthood is not easy. Parenthood scares the hell out of me. It's horrifying to think about. Because if you do really well by your children and they're really happy, maybe they're soft. They don't learn important lessons about life. If you're hard on your kids, maybe the pressure turns the coal into diamonds. Or maybe it turns them into dust and they have baggage for the rest of their lives. Like, how the hell are you supposed to navigate that? How are you supposed to know? Upbringing for kids seems like the most random thing. Thinking of my parents, I can think of all four quadrants on that chart. Things my parents did perfectly that I later attributed to some flawed ways in thinking I developed. Things my parents did really well that helped me tremendously grow as a person. Things my parents did that sent me back for a really long time and stunted certain areas of my life and ways they did things wrong that were tremendous sources of inspiration for me. Some of my best and most cherished traits come from some of the, the difficulties my parents had. What the hell, man? What made the crucial difference? What made it this, not that? God bless anyone trying to figure that out. Though if I had to try to provide an answer, I would guess that the methods, the individual implementations matter somewhat less than the underlying motivation. For example, if you can be really hard on someone from a place of 100% untainted, unrivalrous, unbitter love, the probably is your best chance in my estimation. But that also is difficult because it requires a sort of perfection on your end. It's one of those things you're just gonna get it wrong in some ways. You try to get it mostly right. <laughs> I know this feeling really well. This often is associated with like a bittersweet feeling of kind of shame and regret. Like, ah, oh, it was me, wasn't it? They really loved me after all. <laughs> I don't think it's really necessary. I don't think Freeman is dwelling on it or wants an apology. Oh boy, what manner of amazing test methodology is awaiting us? You're just so easy to cut, sense. Yeah, alright, I was okay. I thought so. Too powerful. All right. She's getting worse and worse. I knew she was behind it. She's just creating this culture. She's speaking to people that match her energy. Her energy is not pure. A lot of it feels like an arm of her own ego. There's a vanity element to it. This should be interesting. But there's only one more episode left. Impressive in itself that you recognize that. 
That's a risky sentence for Siri, feels like. You would have to be closer to Firin's level to understand Firin's level. That's sort of how that goes. You imagine the farthest you can see is the top. Yeah, it's a case of don't mistake the farthest point you can see for the farthest point there is. Man, thinking about matchups, coming back to this rock, scissor, paper thing. Aura the guillotine was the worst matchup for Freerun. Freerun was a hot knife through her butter. That's a story we gotta get one day. Does that mean people are catching up? Since I love you, Siri. It's interesting that Siri rejected the whole human training thing, only to then become the person in charge of the official system for human mages. I'm still not sure about Siri. I can only really go off my gut sense for the time being. But it's almost like she's saying, if it's gonna happen, it has to involve me. It's gonna happen on my terms. But then, like, part of her also hates it, right? So she's probably not great for it. Oh! This is extremely high praise for this. She's still doing it. Later, she's going to be like, oh, like, I trained him on a whim. It was a joke. Oh, this is just Hunter Hunter. And speaking of stacked... Right, yeah, being stacked odds. Doubt. That's such a specific thing, it's not a failure. Yeah, I mean, like, this is why I don't like, this is why I didn't like this in the first place. Imagine you sacrifice your whole internal thing, everything you want, your natural instincts, your sense of right and wrong, because you tell yourself it's a practical benefit to get this license, only to have this third stage be something totally out of your control. It's just Siri's whim, and she says no. And what are you left with then? Why would you willingly engage with this sort of irrationality? I'm glad that the exam, the terribleness of the exam, has actual important un uh, underpinnings, though. It's like a very real thing, deliberately. Okay. Because I said so, that's why. Limits are a big no-no in magic. I fundamentally disagree. This may be true for magic, but I actually find counterintuitively often the opposite is true in real life. This is something I got wrong for a long time because there's a lot of focus in discourse about the key to success is belief in yourself. The thinking being you wiggle through your brain and your consciousness and adjust things here and there and then suddenly you believe and then now you can do the thing. I think it's way more practical just to do the thing. You can accomplish the thing even if you don't believe you can accomplish the thing. If there's something you are called to do that's actionable, has proper steps, is you know reasonably within your control, you don't need to travel through your entire history and un unravel your emotional world and all your parental baggage in order to just start doing that thing. You don't need to hunt through yourself for every incidence of trauma, thinking that by identifying the trauma, it will suddenly make you good at applying yourself to a certain thing. You don't know what the thing is yet. You don't know what the path will be. You don't need to look back to travel forward. It's not that understanding yourself and your history isn't useful. It can be tremendously impactful, but it's not a prerequisite for doing great things. There's plenty of people who have done truly amazing things who are still deeply burdened by things that have happened to them in the past. We've even seen this in media. Like this is coming up a lot recently in Demon Slayer, where people are doing all these great things, but can't let go of their guilt about something, feelings of being unworthy. And that feels real and true. From personal experience, there's tons of things in my life that I never actually thought were possible that came true because I had a modicum of faith that there was potential. It wasn't at all me clearly visualizing the thing or what it would look like in, in the end, because that's impossible, or reaching this state of perfect confidence and then, you know, launching out. You just do it. And actually the, the path of doing it will have a way of helping you understand the things that you need to fix anyway. It'll help you understand yourself better. It will also turn out that some problems just become irrelevant because your scale of what's important changes. It can actually even 
even be worse than that. Actually, if I'm being really honest, I think this whole deep dive into your emotional state can actually often be counterproductive because what you end up doing is associating the discovery of pain with growth, which it's not. That creates an incentive for you to go trauma hunting where you're now not only finding actual things that went wrong, but inventing things that went wrong because it makes you feel good to have more more pain in your, in your narrative, in your backstory. You're tricking yourself into thinking you're developing when actually you're creating more baggage. I don't want to make huge blanket statements, but a lot of the time, the things you focus on are the things that grow. The grass grows where you water it. <laughs> I had a feeling this was coming. This is horrific. I mean, I don't think she cares. It seems like she's just here on a whim. It's just something to do. It's for Fern. So I object to the whole thing. Please tell me that's what it is. Yeah, okay. And she still did it anyway. Same thing. It's the same thing. And it was her favorite. And you hate that. Peace. I'm out of here. Yeah, everyone doesn't care. Doesn't have to. I was over this exam before it began. Why would a god care about the opinion of ants? I'm a self-contained source of power and generation and creativity and beauty. I don't need your approval. I don't need your license, especially. That is why you fail, speaking of belief. Bless is one way to... But luck, yeah, that's what I'm getting at. It's not luck. I mean, it is and it isn't. You happen to be exactly my physical type. Okay, well there. <laughs> I met a lot of people. <laughs> Wow, did the relationship start with a mommy moment? God, what does this remind me of? Yes, what a what a grand gesture went out of her way, sacrificing everything to lift her finger and point. Right. This is going to tie into the fern thing, too. Just itching for a chance to use it. It's very interesting because it's also recognizing Freerun's beauty in a non literal way. The flowers thing is very significant. It keeps coming up. It was Flam, it's Freerun, and Siri hates it, which is telling. I can't exactly pin down what it is. It's something like the pure love of the thing, which is also more than the thing. Part of Freerun's beauty comes from being able to connect and develop that thing. Himmel appreciating the flowers is him appreciating that element of Freerun, and also him having that himself, even if flowers are not his way of expressing it. There's like an undercurrent source there. In that sense, it's also Freerun introducing him to it, maybe. Something big there, yeah, there's that thread tying them together. We only need one, after all. Let's with a person like this, because they're ultimately going to believe what they want to believe. Unless you're able to understand and beat them at the game that they're not able to ignore. But even then, that might trigger anger. Maybe the way around that is you engage with them and beat them on the level that they play, the language that they speak. But at the end of that, there's like a glimmer of hope for them in there that they want. So that the forces that come from the fear of self-preservation are overcome by the forces of desire. I see your weakness. I was going to say, there's a tactic here. Since a lot of the exam is proving to be kind of selfish, and not about them, but about Siri, a tactic here is to just rip Fern away from Freerun, or to covet her for herself. Also, she clearly wants to train humans. It's not really about the magic. It's about so much more. Oh, she's a little one.
For into the future. Wow, all that for just for him to pass, I think. Hope Dankin passes. Again, I'm guessing, but I think one of the things that leads to serious more positive elements that kind of overcomes her more selfish nature is thrill of what's possible. Challenge. Being a little bit bored, it seems, or something like that. Existentially kind of dull. And needing stimulus, needing shiny objects, wanting chaos. Not necessarily negative, but just like things happening. She's ADHD mage. I see that in people. I see that in myself. There's a little bit of a danger for me when I'm not like clear on what I'm doing and how what I'm doing affects a greater vision where I kind of lose connection. That sort of manifests in me acting out, being impulsive, chasing high stimulation, even when it's not healthy, wanting to run away from responsibilities. It's not all bad. It's led to some interesting places. It's just something to be aware of. So that's the end of the exam, right? What a nightmare that was. I say this from the perspective of putting myself in as if I'm a student. It's not a critique of the show or the writing. In fact, I think it was great. Turns out that as expected, it's deliberate. It wasn't just bad test design by the author. It was bad test design by the characters that plays into their personalities and does feel realistic in a sense. Though still not quite sure what series overall thing is, overall goal and plan. I suspect it has her own interests at heart.